a new way to build muscle. This is kind of interesting. We all know the classical way of just tearing down muscle and rebuilding it, but a new way to build muscle. There was a new study published in March of 2025 in sports orthopedics and traumatology. Really fascinating. They were looking at what is called the metabolic theory of building muscle. Now, basically looking at metabolic stress as an anabolic signal to build muscle. Now, let me explain sort of the other ways of building muscle real quick, just to recap. There's myofibrillar growth. Myofibrillar growth is the classic way you've probably heard of, where you tear down muscle fibers and then rebuild them, right? So you're having this like increase in myofibrillar count and uh, increased growth of them. That's classic and probably the gold standard way to uh, talk about building muscle. A lot of nuance within that, a lot of subcategories within that, a lot of ways to skin that and get there. Okay, but then there's this whole other piece, right? There's the sarcoplasmic growth. The sarcoplasmic growth is more temporary growth. It's like water glycogen supercompensation where you have like massive increases of carbohydrates and water that go into the muscle that actually increase cross-sectional area of the muscle. So it's legit muscle growth. It's not just water, it's sarcoplasmic growth and, and these like muscle cells within the muscle that are uh, cells that contribute to the contraction of the muscle, like sarcoplasmic proteins. Okay, but then what we're talking about here is this different way to build muscle and it's achievable by getting the burn, right? Now, we've talked before about lactate before, and I don't want to really go there because that requires an entirely different explanation, but we can save that for a different day. There's something that is called inorganic phosphate that builds up in our muscle, and there is hydrogen, hydrogen ions that build up in our muscle. So if you've ever trained and you've gotten to the point where you have a burn, okay, that burn is a buildup of hydrogen ions, okay? Now, the fatigue, have you ever, like, done, let's just say like a 15 to 18 repetition range, like work where you're maybe doing, let's say squats are a great example with like moderate weight squats where you're doing like moderate reps and you just, you get that burn, but then that just fatigue, it's called peripheral fatigue. That peripheral fatigue that is not just like, this is so heavy, I can't lift it anymore, but it's more like these things are gassed, my legs are gassed. That is driven a lot by what is called inorganic phosphate. So now researchers have said, well, what if the buildup of these metabolites is actually a signal for muscle protein synthesis and growth? And if it is, then how do we capitalize on this? So it gets really fascinating here. What this study found looking at this review is that when inorganic phosphate builds up by training through sort of the burn, you have, again, this peripheral fatigue. But what happens with peripheral fatigue is you get additional recruitment of fibers, muscle fibers, that otherwise would not have been recruited. Okay, so now you have unlocked a new set of fibers that can go through the traditional mechanical growth. Okay, so let's just say purely hypothetical for visual purposes only. Very wrong scientifically. Let's say you had 10 muscle fibers and those 10 muscle fibers are usually what are contracting and tearing down and rebuilding when you lift weights. But then, because you went through the burn a little bit more, you suddenly recruited three more. So now you have 13 muscle fibers. Okay, so these 13 muscle fibers are now contracting and tearing down. You can see how, in that case, you'd have 30% more tear down and break, uh, rebuilding, right? So you're getting more growth. Totally wrong scientifically, Obviously, there's way more than that, and it's a different kind of situation, but that's the general premise. So by pushing through this burn and buildup of inorganic phosphate, you are allowing for recruitment of these fibers, which may allow for those fibers to break down and cause more growth. Long story short, you have more muscle fibers that are getting stimulated, so more opportunities to build muscle. Now, there are a couple other things that occur here. Okay, there's adaptations that occur. So, First off, let's talk before we get into the adaptations, like how you would train, like how would this actually look, okay? So you don't wanna just like push it through, like whatever, find a way to endure pain and push through it. There's a way that you can force more of these buildups, right? Shorter rest periods, okay? So one thing that I like to do is what are called compound sets. I've done these for years and they've been a big staple for me in building muscle and maintaining muscle in severe deficits. Compound sets are where you do something like 
Uh, a good example, leg extensions to fatigue. Like leg, leg extensions are just easy to get yourself to fatigue that burn. So full leg extensions for a while and then jump into a moderate weight like front squat or back squat or a leg press or something. Like I wouldn't recommend someone fatigue their legs then go do a heavy back squat if you're not trained, but it's a, just an example, right? So I'll do that, I'll pre-fatigue and then jump into a bigger movement and I'm pre-fatigued and it doesn't takes me less load to get, but I'm also burning, I'm burning and burning and burning and I'm working through that's mentally just brutal to work with. And that is all because I'm dealing with metabolic waste. But the metabolic waste is this entirely different pathway to build muscle independent of just the mechanical side. So I'm not saying you exclusively train in this method, but I am saying that if you occasionally pre-exhaust and do short rest periods, like wham, bam, bam, you're getting this different pathway to potentially build muscle. You're also having mitochondrial adaptations that occur. So the mitochondria, obviously where we produce ATP and where we create the energy, we have more ATP, more mitochondria, you're gonna have a more efficient muscle and a stronger muscle. I also put a link down below, there's a product that's called Timeline that uses a very researched compound called urolithin A. This is pretty cool stuff. Urolithin A, is something that triggers what's called mitophagy. So mitophagy means that it's gonna take the mitochondria that is maybe weak and not working quite so well and recycle some of the unused components of it to fuel the growth of new stronger mitochondria or feed it to the mitochondria that are already doing really well and create them stronger so they're more efficient. So you're recycling Mitochondria. If you've ever heard of autophagy before, this is autophagy but localized at the mitochondrial level. Now we're seeing evidence, and Timeline Nutrition has actually published some studies looking at this, that there is actually positive influence on muscle quality and muscle growth. So things like mitochondrial autophagy or mitophagy can actually induce more muscle growth and definitely muscle preservation. So I highly, highly recommend if you're training in different metabolic styles that using something like urolithin A, would really be powerful. The link down below is for 10% off of Timeline Nutrition. They have a powder form, they have a capsule form, and now they have a gummy form as well, which is a sugar-free gummy. It's definitely worth it. It's highly noticeable for me. So if I increase my training volume, I load up on my urolithin A from Timeline because it helps me out in terms of recovery, but I feel like I'm doing a service at a mitochondrial level. So again, we're gonna come back to this whole thing and kind of how you can do this. Remember that there's different ways of training, okay? So there's our standard load training where we're just focused on volume and load and how much overall muscle, like uh, load can we put the muscle under and how much volume can we do with a given load. Then there's this whole other strategy of the metabolic piece. So you layer it in. So I would say one week out of every four weeks, focus on doing lots of pre-exhaust work where you do things like, I'll give you a couple examples. The leg extension before squats is a great example. Also doing something like a few chest flies on a cable machine before doing dumbbell press. You're pre-exhausting and you're making it so that when you do go into that movement, yes, you're a little more fatigued and you're not gonna push as much weight, but you're going to get that burn and that peripheral fatigue faster. Now there's a study in Frontiers in Physiology that really demonstrated well that it's not about the weight, right? So this study was cool because what they did is they took a look at high volume versus high load in participants. And they found that the higher volume actually had significantly more muscle growth and muscle protein synthesis than the group that did high load. So the volume is really what matters, but more importantly, if we look at all the literature, we start seeing proximity to failure is what matters. So if you pre-exhaust by doing some flies and then you go and bench press in a safe way, of course, maybe a Smith machine or dumbbells where it's a little safer, you're pre-exhausted, you're able to get to that proximity to failure with less load. So then not only are you getting the mechanics mechanical load part out of the way, but you're getting this whole new metabolic piece. Okay, so pre-exhausting is a great method to get more metabolic load on the muscle, which isn't just a way, once again, to get mechanical growth, but you're getting all this flood of signaling devices. Now, I've talked about lactate before, so I will touch on it. Lactate is the disassociated, or lactic acid, most people know it as, that's the disassociated form of lactate. That comes as a result of that burn and ultimately overcoming the burn, taking the burn, taking that lactate and recycling it through the entire pyruvate dehydrogenase, this whole process where it's getting converted back into 
ATP. So if you can push through the burn a little bit, you become better at using your metabolic waste as fuel, all while getting an additional signal to grow more muscle. So your program could look like this. You go two weeks, three weeks of traditional training the way you normally would, regular resistance training with regular rest periods, and then one to two weeks of this pre-exhaust 30 to 45 second rest between sets, moving fast. Yes, you're gonna get more cardio. Yes, it's not gonna seem like traditional hypertrophy work, but you're hitting two different nails on the head, two different pathways that are gonna converge and ultimately get you more recovery and more growth. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.